The unsettling calm that had descended upon our Wednesday night meal was broken by the sound of forks clinking against plates, I stared at my six-year-old husband Rowan across the table, trying to find any sign of the caring person I had married, however, he avoided looking at me while shoving pasta into his mouth, my eyes strayed to his phone, which was sitting next to his plate with a notification blinking menacingly, as though to challenge me to open it, even though I knew better, I gave in. To temptation, I bent down and punched in the unlock code, but Rowan didn't seem to notice, his acting had evolved to be very believable, I was welcomed with a message that seemed like a graphic accusation, I can't wait to feel you inside of me again, come to our location in one hour, Marcel was the sender, and his name burned into my mind like jagged pieces of glass that explained his recent distancing, his unexplained late hours, and his straying focus, everything okay, honey, Rowan jolted me. Out of my reverie with his innocent tone, unable to speak, I slid his phone back across the table, his mask slipped and a glimmer of dread showed in his eyes, I suddenly understood that the man I had thought I knew was only a figment of my imagination, he started, I can explain, but I cut him off with a raised hand, don't bother, I murmured, my voice quivering with a mixture of rage and sadness, just tell me one thing, how long has this been going on, with a defeated expression on his shoulders? Rowan parted his lips and shut them again, finally, he said, six months, and his admission hit me square in the stomach, I was mistreated for six months, dreaming of a future with a man who had already left our marriage while I stupidly took care of our house, who is she, even though I already knew the response, I demanded Marcella, with a name rife with treachery, was his sour response, the beautiful twenty-something interior designer from Rowan's office project, he laughed sourly, does it really? Matter, his remarks, she's someone who made me feel things I haven't felt in years, wounded the tiny part of my heart that was still intact, I wanted to scream till my throat hurt and collapse on the ground in agony, but I wouldn't give him the satisfaction of witnessing my complete breakdown, I got up from my chair and grabbed my purse as I made my way to the door, using all of my power, he called after me, his voice displaying the first signs of worry, where are you going, I turned back to look at him, tears still in my eyes, I said, I'm leaving, with a sense of closure in my voice, and when I get back, you better be gone, because I don't even recognize you anymore, I yanked open the door and marched out into the night, my resolve strengthened with every stride I took away from my pathetic marriage, I had been foolish to think that the picture-perfect existence we had created together was real, but at last that delusion had crumbled, irreparably fractured, the entire weight of Rowan's. Betrayal crushed me, and I spent a sleepless night at a hotel, tears running down my cheeks, how could the man who promised to love and care for me, the man I adored, have so blatantly abandoned our marriage, blinded by hurt but determined to act, I called a private investigator suggested by a friend who had gone through a traumatic divorce the following morning, he had unearthed a vile trail of evidence in less than a day, which made me shudder in fury and disgust, not that Rowan had been having. A romance with Marcella, that shallow interior designer, the investigator's report included emails, credit card statements, and dated images of Rowan checking into several hotels with different women, revealing multiple encounters over a period of over a year. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Davies, the investigator murmured, placing the incriminating dossier on my kitchen table. Your husband has been quite prolific in his indiscretions. I balled my hands, squelching waves of queasy feeling among the names and Faces that immediately jumped out at me was Marcella's, the one whose playful text message had revealed the truth about this whole vile situation, I'm angry and I want to know everything there is to know about her, I said at the investigator, wherever she lives, where she works, all of it, he gave me an address two days later, a chic apartment in a posh neighborhood that I could never have afforded on my own, I must have been at home, blinded by a wild urge, while Rowan was funneling money to keep. His mistress living in luxury anger driving me, I ended myself at Marcella's house, I entered the lobby using the temporary code that the investigator had obtained, I had the ideal opportunity to confront the woman who had contributed to the ruin of my life, her door was unlocked, as soon as I stormed inside, I was met by an opulent atmosphere that proved my husband's lover had sophisticated taste. A smooth voice shouted out, hello, from another room is that you, Rowan, the seductress, with her.
raven hair and only a silk robe that clung hungrily to her flesh, caught my eye, and I tightened my fists, her eyes grew wide upon seeing me, I clenched my teeth and spat, you are the one who destroyed my marriage, she lifted one well-groomed eyebrow, a mocking smirk spreading across her lush lips, instead of displaying any hint of shame, well, if it's not the well-known Mrs. Davies, she smirked and remarked, I was wondering when you'd show up to get a good look at the woman your pathetic husband. Can't resist, I was overcome with a blinding fury, and before I could control myself, my palm swung back and slapped her arrogant face hard, I felt a wicked joy at having finally removed that superior expression from her face as she screamed and recoiled in fear, you're going to regret that, she said, hiding her quickly flushed cheek with one palm, wait until Rowan hears about this, Rowan is leaving me for you, isn't he? I retaliated by charging towards her, forcing her to retreat behind the wall. All right, you home-destroying snake, allow me to give you a reality check, he's bankrupt, he has been using our money to woo a little gold-digging tramp like you by purchasing hotels, presents, and this opulent apartment, her expression briefly changed to one of revulsion before her haughty exterior returned, let's see how that goes, she scoffed, this isn't over, Mrs. Davies, not by a long shot, with a growing desire for vengeance, I stared in disdain as she slithered away, no, I muttered to myself. When I hurried out, this is just the beginning, I was a seething volcano of pain and wrath that was ready to explode after my epic encounter with Marcella, with nothing on my mind but to permanently remove that arrogant expression from the home wrecker's face, I marched back home, Rowan had put his belongings into the spare bedroom during my spiteful errand, so he was already there, when he saw me storm through the front door. His eyes widened, Alara, what's going on, shocked by the angry look on. My face, he inquired. I didn't even try to reply in words, rather, I hurled the incriminating proof gathered by the private eye throughout the space, causing the printed emails, pictures, and bank records to scatter like candy on the ground. Rowan appeared to realize the extent of his transgressions for the first time as he examined the evidence-filled files. Turning pale, you've been involved in several affairs, I said. Speaking in a tone that hinted at danger, it appears to have been more than a year, the worst thing isn't even that I produced another sheaf of documents, this one describing the enormous amounts of money Rowan had been transferring into a secret account, presumably to finance his opulent trysts with his mistresses, the money, Rowan, I growled, how could you steal from our own accounts to wine and dine your paramours, anger flashed across his features instead of regret, he raised himself to his maximum height, his rage pouring outward, don't you dare take that sanctimonious tone with me, he responded, Alara. It was you who took me here, for years, our marriage has been a dismal, lifeless shell, is it really my fault that I've finally found pleasure somewhere else, the shocking turnaround left me speechless, and my disbelief soon turned to a burning wrath, finding happiness, I echoed, shocked, Marcella, with that home-wrecking bimbo, Rowan, she's not some deep-seated, enlightened woman, she's been draining you of all your money in a cunning and cunning way, his expression showed skepticism for the first time, he was too adamant to admit my accusation, whatever he thought of it, that's sufficient, he stated icily Alara, I want a divorce, to get things started, I've already been in touch with my attorney, I'm tired of this terrible marriage and your critical pestering, the harsh words cut through the small remnant of my heart, I flinched back, felt the room begin to whirl around me with the crushing weight of my broken reality, I could see through blurry vision as Rowan gathered his things and stormed out the door without looking back that was it in an instant my hopes and my life as i knew it were destroyed in an instant by the man who had promised to love and care for me until the day we died amidst the jumbled remains of my marriage i thought sadly some vow at last i gave in to the need to scream a pained cry that broke through the layer of numbness that was encasing me i cried out till my throat hurt from screaming releasing the trauma that had been placed inside of me However, after my howl stopped, I experienced an unusual feeling of clarity, I saw, through hazy vision, a familiar rectangular object poking out from one of the folders, our family's home deed, which was only named after me years ago, in the middle of my father's estate planning, he had asked that the house be placed entirely under my ownership, just in case. I assumed at the time that his mistrust of Rowan was just a sign of his irrationality, but now, with the first sparks of revenge. Igniting in my chest, I silently thanked my father for his foresight, nothing would remain to me after this destruction, no, 
I would retaliate and rebuild from the ashes Rowan had scattered all about me, the deed safely in my hands, it's okay if he wants conflict, I was only getting started, after all, the next few days passed in a blur of anguish and fury. I spent many sleepless nights poring over the file compiled by the private investigator, my eyes burning from the effort of holding back. Tears, however, shedding tears wouldn't resolve anything, only decisive action could ensure my emergence from this nightmare with both my pride and financial security intact, armed with reams of evidence detailing Rowan's serial infidelity and financial misconduct, I strode into the office of Diane Hastings, renowned as one of the city's most tenacious divorce attorneys, she was a shark in kitten heels. And I knew I'd need every ounce of her ferocity, Diane flipped through the documents with a practiced eye, her polished veneer cracking just slightly when she absorbed the lurid details, good god, she muttered, removing her glasses to stare at me in disbelief, I've seen some philandering dirtbags in my time, but your husband is a prime specimen, I managed a weak smile at her candor, can you help me, Diane, I want to take him for everything he's worth, a feral grin spread across her lips, with evidence like this. He won't know what hit him over the next few weeks, Diane and I constructed an ironclad strategy to decimate Rowan's finances and hold him accountable for his prolific indiscretions, we would not only freeze any assets he'd stashed away to fund his tawdry second life, but also pursue a punishing alimony figure. Given the extent of his betrayal and financial misdeeds, this Marcel woman is the key, Diane told me, tapping her pen against a photo of the SMY home record. If we can establish that she knowingly carried on an affair with your husband to extract monetary gain, we can pursue her personal assets as well, and trust me, that interior design gig pays for a lot of silicone, the thought of delivering the same reckoning to Marcella that Rowan was about to experience made my heart accelerate, she had disappeared from view ever since our nasty altercation at her flat, probably waiting for her lover's fat cash to keep allowing her to live the life she does, like the scorned wife. She would be in for a nasty awakening meanwhile, Rowan had been eerily quiet, possibly stewing in denial and hoping for a new beginning with his mistress turned fiancé, if only he realized that our once passionate romance was going to turn into a violent, bloody court battle that would ruin him and bring him shame when Diane personally brought a mountain of documents to Rowan's rented apartment, a move to freeze all of his assets. Based on proof that he had egregiously misappropriated marital money to finance his extramarital affairs, the storm finally broke, all he could do would be hobble into court and face the destruction he had caused, it was almost worth it to endure his wicked treachery to see the expression of utter astonishment on his face when we met for the first hearing, his conceited mistress was nowhere to be found, maybe before I tore up her dinner ticket, she had finally realized her mistake and parted ways. Diane's shamed look gave way to indignation as she ruthlessly detailed the copious amounts of evidence pertaining to his vile double life, including Hotel receipts with the names of his mistresses and bank statements, our prepared scorched earth argument was so strong that his counsel could only splutter helplessly, you're making a big mistake, Rowan growled in the courthouse foyer following the embarrassing sessions, the man I once loved flared in his eyes for a brief time, we can end this, Alara, we can start afresh and work things out, Diane watched me look at him with cold contempt, prepared to strike if he tried to press further, did you? Honestly think I would just slink away and let you ride off into your pathetic second life, I questioned, enjoying the sharp edge of what I said, his features twisted into an unrecognizable grimace as his face hardened, you're going to pay for this, you vindictive, Diane moved in front of us right away and held up a warning hand, I gave her a comforting look, his hollow threats, after all he'd put me through, ricocheted off my newly acquired indifference armor, I said, believe what you want, and turn to leave when we move forward, Rowan, keep in mind that you brought this upon yourself, and I'm only now beginning, following that tumultuous first hearing, Rowan and I found ourselves in a judicial battleground where there was nothing but savage backstabbing, his attorneys charged me with inventing evidence and meeting with other men in private to fabricate his indiscretions, a bold accusation from a guy who had supported not one, but two mistresses during our marriage, I just braced myself against the lies, concentrating on the righteous rage that flared up inside of me each time I remembered his betrayal, Diane gave me the assurance that these were just desperate ploys to set up smoke screens, with antiseptic assurance, she declared, the evidence trail doesn't lie, all we need is for one crack to appear in his sordid facade, then his entire life crumbles in the strangest ways, fate appeared intended to give me that crack, he was giving the private investigator an update on, 
the most recent legal drama when he made a casual remark that completely stopped me cold that Marcella woman certainly gets around, doesn't she, he responded, my palm clenched around the phone as I froze, what do you mean by that, he said, I've been researching Miss Perfect a little, she's not only hooking up with your soon-to-be ex, it turns out, I've got evidence on the side, she's entertaining an older, more affluent businessman, the idea of that arrogant, silicone-saturated snake playing the same cunning trick on several guys filled me with white-hot wrath. That put an end to her assertions that she was a fortunate victim of her circumstances, right then, a deliciously cunning plot started to form in my head, persist in investigating this additional man, I directed the investigator I need to know everything, who he is, where they meet, all of it, a sly smile stretched over his aged features you've got a juicy one in mind, don't you, Mrs. Davies? I met his face with a look of icy determination Marcella believes she can take advantage of married men. Without facing any repercussions, it's about time she experienced the taste of her own medicine, Diane and I collaborated carefully with the investigator over the course of the following few weeks to discreetly put together a solid case that validated Marcella's extracurricular activities. Photos that we were able to collect showed her walking inside a luxurious high-rise condo owned by business mogul Christopher Woodrow a 60-something tycoon who controlled a massive company, and more. Crucially, a very conscious wife sitting atop the empire Diane pondered, you know what they say, while we looked over the surveillance stills showing Marcella with Mr. Woodrow in positions that were obviously compromising mistresses consistently assure their married boyfriends that they would never genuinely desert their partner in favor of a woman such as Mrs. Woodrow. Finding out that her spouse's sidekick has been engaging in the same blatant behavior with other wealthy marks could potentially drive her to the brink. My eyes glowed with anticipation of retaliation. Once we exposed Marcella's widespread infidelity, her haughty, holier-than-thou demeanor would be forcibly changed. It was time for her world to fall apart around her too, if she believed she could use the sacredness of marriage for her own evil purposes and Rowan, well, all trace of sympathy would evaporate from him when footage showed his cherished fiancée having affairs with other wealthy paramours behind his back, the final insult to a man who had given up all to leave his family behind because of her illusory displays of affection, they were both consumed by desire, avarice, and hubris, they were the ideal marks, and now they were just lambs to be killed, I was getting ready very carefully, not even the ashes of their inflated egos would be left by the time I was finished. I had spent weeks discreetly gathering incriminating invoices, images, and phone conversations, and now everything was ready for my big counterattack. When I called Diane's direct line number, I could hardly contain my excitement. It's time, I declared, my tone heavy with determination. Let's burn this whole sordid facade to the ground. The ideal venue for my great retribution was the yearly Westbridge Charity Gala, a magnificent, high-profile affair that the city's upper class, including Rowan and his lovely Marcella, would have been sure to attend. They would have been enjoying their newfound prominence as a fashionable power couple, having risen from the ashes of my failed marriage, those two haughty fools had no idea that their whole farce of a relationship was going to blow up in their faces in front of all their wealthy peers, there would be no honeyed lies or public demeanor that could shield them from the denouement I had painstakingly planned, Diane and I looked around the glitzy Westbridge Hotel ballroom for our chosen targets as soon as we arrived. As expected, Marcella was slung over Rowan like a chic, ostentatious trophy, her tight red dress leaving very little room for interpretation, Diane whispered in my ear, eyes on the prize, as I experienced a wave of repulsion and sympathy for the man I had once loved, it's showtime, we'd been well prepared, when I was mixing with the city's social elite while posing as a benefactor. I handed Diane's assistant the explosive pictures and films we had taken of Marcella's numerous indiscretions, our evidence bomb was primed and ready to go off the first. Murmurs spread like wildfire across the audience in a matter of minutes, guests were gasping and pointing iPhones all around us as the lewd, obscene photos of Marcella flirting with her elderly tycoon lover went viral, Christopher Woodrow was a notorious cheater, and someone had to have seen him since the controversy swiftly gained momentum and spread like radioactive gossip, while revelers gaped in scandalized rapture. Diane and I pretended to be innocent, however, I caught a glimpse of 
Marcella's face becoming pale from the corner of my eye before we looked across the floor, her painted lips twisted with fury, finally revealing the identity of the person behind her stunning public breakdown. Ah, ha ha, at that moment, a sleek white shoe materialized just beyond my field of vision, I followed the incredibly toned leg attached to it all the way up to Miranda Woodrow's incredibly angry face. Christopher's scorned and opulent wife, you sighted little, she growled, sending spit flying. As she grabbed Marcella's fancy hair, did you really think you could keep making a fool of me behind my back with that? With a violent twist, Miranda turned Marcella to face the audience, ripping the front of her dress apart in a shower of sequins and revealing her prosthetic enhancements to the whole gala crowd, Marcella screamed and hastily crossed her arms to hide herself as camera flashes burst like strobe lights. My gaze darted across the room to see Rowan staring at his humiliated fiancé. With a slack jaw and a sickening mix of shock and self-pity on his face, I watched with twisted enjoyment as his pliable face began to show signs of understanding, Marcella had only been using him as yet another affluent toy to fund her extravagant demands. That the two individuals who were mostly accountable for destroying my life in orbit were now subjected to the same severe humiliation on the biggest possible platform is a beautiful example of poetic justice when Marcella eventually managed. To escape Miranda's grasp and run screaming out of the ballroom, Rowan turned to face me, her eyes cold and haunting, we locked gazes over the shocked visitors, and I let my complete vindication explode on my face at that same instant, I murmured the words for his benefit, letting the insinuation cling to me like a strong whiff of schadenfreude, you did this to yourself, I said, with a tense jaw, he nodded once. Reluctantly acknowledging that I had, in fact, exacted the ultimate punishment from my past existence, and with that, he turned and stalked out of the gala, leaving nothing but wreckage and complete debasement in his wake. Through a void that was opening up swiftly in the audience, Diane appeared at my side, and I sipped my champagne, letting the lovely moment linger on my tongue well. To start, Mrs. Davies, she said, she murmured with a proud smile, I do believe this evening has been a full and resounding success, don't you? A savage grin stretched across my face as I surveyed. The catastrophic scene my vengeance had wrought, you don't know the half of it, I replied, but I have a feeling this is just the beginning of something beautiful, in the aftermath of the Westbridge Gala calamity, Rowan did what any disgraced, recently humbled man would do, he came slinking back with his tail between his legs, begging for mercy, I'll admit. Seeing him reduced to a shell of his formerly arrogant self provided a wicked sort of satisfaction, gone was the sheer bravado, the unearned superiority, and callous indifference to my pain, now, sitting across the table from me in Diane's office, he looked more like a kicked straight than my husband of six years Alara, he whimpered, while I cast him a scornful glance I'm at a loss for words, Marcella's situation, God, I was such a fool, I remained silent and let the stillness worsen until I could see him writhing under my ruthless look with humiliation on his face, he said, I know I can never take back all the damage I caused you, but, I'm pleading you, Please give me one more chance, permit me to mend our differences. Before I could control myself, a sharp bark of laughter leaked out of my mouth, make things right, I echoed, astonished. During our marriage, Ryan, you cheated on me numerous times with other ladies, you constantly deceived me and tried to control me, why in the world do you believe you're worthy of another opportunity at anything from me? Perhaps for the first time, he opened his eyes and saw the full extent of his sins. I was destroyed when I saw you with Marcella. He stumbled to himself, she was only financing her lifestyle with me, just like some pitiful meal ticket. When the video leaked, I became aware of how naive I had been and how horribly I had let my lust run so wild and out of control. Failing you as a spouse, I stared at him hard, not letting his well-practiced tears of regret deflect me, not after witnessing him ruthlessly destroy my life in the name of fleeting pleasures. Do you know how it felt to have the man I loved, the man I built a life and future with, not only betray? me but humiliate me in the worst way possible over and over again, I questioned in a low, menacing voice to find that you had abandoned me like a pointless burden in order to pursue obscene trysts with interchangeable people, Rowan's manner seemed to crumple under the weight of his sins, a palpable shadow fell over him, his visage turned into a mask of shame as self-loathing and regret warped it, at last. He appeared to realize how much pain he had caused me, he mumbled, I'm a monster, with a lot 
of regret in his voice, a horrible, self-centered creature undeserving of your affection, you don't have to pardon me, Alara, I simply hope that I can somehow undo what has happened, even if it means giving up everything I own in order to change who I have become, his pathetic cries caused a turbulent sea inside of me to stir, the thought of giving in to his need for atonement sickened me, even though there was a part of me that wanted to celebrate his pain, I was no longer the gullible bride he had married, susceptible to manipulation via fake remorse, I stood up and addressed his eyes directly, noticing a glimmer of hope that was snuffed out by the words that followed, Ruan, I don't want your money, I would want for you to not be in my life, he reacted instinctively, trembling as though he had been hit, I growled, fighting the impulse to strike out violently, don't pretend ignorance, I said, after everything you've done, do you truly believe I would allow you back into my life, but... Alara, but nothing, I sharply interrupted, bending until our faces were only a few inches apart, I'll make sure our divorce moves forward quickly if you accept these terms now, and you can go out and do whatever debauched second act you've planned, however, you will never again beg for my pardon or comprehension, the instant you treated our vows like garbage, you gave up that right, Rowan sat there dumbfounded, as if he was reaching for words he was missing, with a nod indicating the seriousness. Of the decision at hand, Diane set the paperwork down on the table, your choice, Mr. Davies, she said, breaking the tension with her voice, you can either resist further or accept these generous terms, allowing Mrs. Davies the peace of mind she deserves to move on, a kaleidoscope of feelings, including fury, guilt, and bitter acceptance, played out across Rowan's face as I watched the silence fill the room, seeming to last forever, at last, he let out a moan of resignation, reached for the pen, and quickly scribbled his name across the dotted line, sealing our impending divorce, we met eyes for the final time, and I noticed his chastened demeanor, which made me smile triumphantly, his voice heavy with resentment, he murmured through gritted teeth, you'll never hear from me again after this, however, Alara, I hope you get the tranquility you're looking for, I've turned such a filthy bastard, and you deserve far better, after giving that final blow, he pivoted and confidently left the office. His failure weighing heavy on his shoulders with every sorrowful stride, I let go of a breath I didn't know I was holding as I saw his receding figure disappear down the hallway. At last, it was over, now, like a cancerous growth, the man who had previously meant the world to me was gone from my life, now that the disgusting chapter was closed, I could start living my new reality, one that I had crafted myself. Formed by the hatred of his deeds, Diane put a comforting hand on my shoulder, her. Usually sardonic smile melting somewhat, you succeeded, she muttered, you took back your authority and honor, never before have I witnessed a lady rise like you have from the ashes, I smiled back at her, feeling the limitless possibilities glimmering just beyond the horizon, this is just the beginning, I firmly said, my rebirth starts now, thanks to Diane's relentless legal efforts. Our divorce settlement was finalized six months after Rowan's painful exit from my life, rising from the ashes of my failed marriage, I acquired the majority of our jointly owned property, including our family home's deed, allowing me to start over, Rowan was legally prohibited, as part of the arrangement, from making any attempt to get in touch with me, not that he would have any how, when I last heard from the grapevine, his reputation had been destroyed by our catastrophic downfall, and he had gone back to lick his wounds in silent embarrassment, I had no pleasure in seeing him fail, all of my attention had turned inside, toward accepting the new chapter that was being written about myself, however, there was a cathartic release in knowing that I had brought the man who had tried to ruin me to his knees, every juicy detail of our divorce story had been extensively covered by the media, with stories about the disgraced wife who had survived her cheating husband and the rise of a new divorce warrior queen dominating the headlines. I couldn't help but laugh grimly at being rebranded as a folk hero by folks living vicariously through my revenge, though it was a little crass, it was an odd feeling, but not totally unpleasant, despite the pain Rowan had caused me, I refused to accept that I was a victim, my new existence would be based on tenacity, fortitude, and building something constructive out of the ashes he left behind, for this reason, over three months after the divorce was officially finalized, I threw a small-scale banquet in the ballroom of the Westbridge Hotel, the same location, 
where Marcella had fallen months earlier, the rich and powerful of the city mixed together beneath towering centerpieces of fresh roses, with a sophisticated ambience created by a string quartet, there were no exposed affairs or vile scandals to overshadow my occasion, unlike before, this event served as the launch pad for my namesake charity, Alara's Light, which supports women who have been betrayed by infidelity but have come out stronger as a result of their fortitude, the well-heeled audience erupted in thunderous applause during my statement that night as I detailed the organization's purpose to assist financially suffering divorcees in need as well as offer counseling and legal aid, part of the millions I had obtained from Rowan would fund the critical initial years of my charity, speaking from the podium, I declared, no woman should ever feel helpless in the wake of a spouse's betrayal. And I did it with fresh elegance as I looked out over the delighted audience with compassion and community, we can uplift lives from devastation and allow them to flourish anew, just as I was empowered to do in my own journey. As soon as the speeches ended, a queue of well-wishers and potential funders grew swiftly, eager to offer their support to my cause. I smiled warmly at each one, pride and purpose filling my heart, who would have thought that a year ago, this dignified, confident woman presiding over a crowd of admirers was the same wounded soul that lay shattered on her kitchen floor. The change was astonishing, a true monument to the strength of shrewd determination and the uncompromising pursuit of justice. I felt a surge of energy after the successful night's event, barely noticing a newcomer patiently waiting at the end of the line of well-wishers, he stood there, a trim and handsome man in his early forties, with striking hazel eyes exuding admiration Mrs. Davies, he greeted warmly as he approached, his voice carrying a subtle British accent. I must commend you on your remarkable mission and your inspiring story of resilience, his polished demeanor and well-fitted tuxedo hinted at a man of considerable means, thank you, Mr. Douglas, I responded, intrigued by his effusive praise and undeniable charm, Nigel Douglas, a friend of Christopher Woodrow, actually, he introduced himself with a roguish smile, as he mentioned their differing circles post the unpleasantness, I couldn't help but suppress a smirk at his diplomatic understatement, I'm a journalist by trade, he continued, emboldened by my amusement, though my true passion lies in amplifying stories of courage and perseverance, much like yours, our gaze is locked, and there was an undeniable electric charge between us, Nigel Douglas certainly exuded charm and was a pleasant deviation from my recent experiences, well, Mr. Douglas, I said with a coy smile, extending my hand, if you're truly moved by spirit, perhaps we could share a more intimate account of my trials over a drink sometime soon, his handshake was warm and confident, lingering just a touch longer than necessary, I would be utterly delighted, Mrs. Davies, he replied. His excitement palpable as he departed into the twinkling crowd, watching him go, a giddy spark of excitement ignited within me, the crushing weight of past betrayals had nearly destroyed me, but through my own resolve, I had turned devastation into triumph, this radiant night under Westbridge's glittering chandeliers marked the beginning of a new dawn, a future crafted on my own terms, no longer a victim, but a victor, reborn from the ashes of my former life, that's all about the first story and now let's watch another similar story, the morning tranquility shattered abruptly as the phone rang incessantly, sending a surge of adrenaline through me, with trembling hands, I reached for it, my heart racing, on the other end was my granddaughter, Eliza, her voice quivering with fear, grandma, she gasped, you have to help me, panic seized me instantly, Eliza, what's wrong, where are you, I demanded, amidst shuffling sounds and stifled sobs, she confessed, I'm locked in the attic, daddy and, Clarissa did this to me, anger surged through me like a wildfire as I struggled to maintain composure, the attic at their house, I clarified, yes, she whimpered, I'm so scared, grandma, please come get me, I'm on my way, baby girl, I assured her, grabbing my keys with one hand and clutching the phone tightly with the other, everything will be okay, I promise, the suburban streets blurred as I raced to my son Derek's opulent mansion, I had entrusted him and his wife Clarissa with Eliza's care after my daughter's tragic death, but doubts had plagued me from the beginning, slamming the car into park, I burst through their front door, Eliza's desperate pleas echoing in my mind, Derek, Clarissa, I called out, met with silence, charging upstairs, I threw open doors, fists clenched in fury, near the end of the hall, a jar hung the attic hatch, I yanked it down and scrambled up into the stifling, confined space there, I found my beloved Eliza, her eyes wide with terror, her body trembling, my heart, 
shattered into fragments at the sight. Oh, Eliza, I murmured, gathering her frail form into my arms, what have they done to you? She clung to me desperately, whispering apologies through her tears, none of that matters now, I reassured her, blinking back my own furious tears, I've got you, suddenly, the trapdoor slammed open behind us, and Derek appeared. Clarissa smirking in his shadow, well, well, mother dearest, he sneered, breaking into our home, how dare you, I screamed at them, my voice raw with anger, locking her up like an animal, she's just a child, you monsters, Clarissa's eyes gleamed with malice, she's our child now, to do with as we please, she declared, Derek seized my arm with a brutal grip, pulling me upright, and there's nothing you can do about it, old woman, he spat, his words fueled by unleashed rage, I pushed Derek away forcefully, shielding Eliza's fragile body with my own, get your filthy hands off us, I spat with venom, I'll see you both rotting in a prison cell if it's the last thing I do, Derek lunged for Eliza, but I dodged backward, seizing her hand, come on, I shouted, dragging her toward the stairs, we're getting out of here, hand in hand, we fled that house of horrors, Derek and Clarissa's howls of outrage fading behind us, my nightmare was only just beginning, but I would stop at nothing to save Eliza and make them pay, the drive home was a blur, Eliza huddled against me, frail and shaking, barely registering the world around her, when we reached my modest ranch house, I scooped her up and carried her inside like a rag doll, gently setting her on the sofa, I grabbed a blanket and wrapped her in its warmth, she stared vacantly, silent tears streaking her hollow cheeks, my heart ached at the sight of her gaunt frame, ribs protruding, wrists bony nestled next to her, I comforted her, saying easy now, sweet Pete you're safe with grandma, Eliza's lip trembled as her eyes slowly came to rest on me, whispering, I can't believe they did this, something inside of me burned fiercely when I heard her tiny, shy voice, recollections of Derek and that which Clarissa, posing as caregivers for Eliza following Jenny's passing, erupted like wildfire, memories of their scheme to gain access to my house and our family inheritance, all of their phony assurances, their deceit, setting the stage, it had begun mildly, critiquing my parenting of Jenny and spotting faults with antiques and interior design. This place is a relic, mother, Clarissa had mockingly said. We'll take over from here, they nudged and prodded until I gave in, giving up the act out of shame and insecurity, subsequently, they completely renovated the place, removing all sentimental remnants of the house I had cherished, I recalled Derek's phone conversations, which were becoming less in number, and his justifications regarding Eliza's challenging behavior, they were torturing her and keeping her inheritance hidden from me the entire time, that miserable brat won't ever have to worry about you again, Clarissa had chuckled last Christmas in the driveway, we'll take care of everything from now on, the ultimate insult was when they moved into that opulent mansion with their ill-gotten wealth and totally cut me out, I ought to have recognized and taken action sooner, Eliza's pleading, but no more, grandma, voice drew me back to the here and now, her eyes were hurt when she looked at me, I took a deep breath and made my muscles release their tension, honey, everything will work out, well, I'll make sure they never injure you again, how do we get rid of them, they're too strong, she said, her voice breaking in terror, not this time, I said firmly while gazing directly into her eyes this time, they picked the wrong battle, there was a flash of hope in Eliza's face, what are you going to do, first, we record all of their heinous transgressions, I comforted her by gently stroking her matted hair, the abuse, the neglect, the theft, to show you how nasty they are, we'll provide you, with medical attention, then, we retaliate by using the entire weight of the law to take everything away from them, Eliza's eyes grew wide, then determinately hardened, including your house, especially my house, I snarled, they treat you like trash and believe they can take our legacy, every single dirty, cruel act will be paid for by them, I promise this, tears filled Eliza's small body as she threw her skeleton arms around me, I gripped her firmly as a steely resolve began to develop, I had been, broken and knocked down far too much in my lifetime from being trampled and walked on by the people closest to me. But not any longer, I was going to give Derek and Clarissa the full brunt of my wrath because they had provoked the bear into hibernation, I woke up the following morning with a vengeance, even before sunrise, Eliza was sleeping fitfully, so I started making calls, my initial goal was to get back in touch with Sam Barker, an old acquaintance from my youth after graduating from high school. Sam entered the police department and advanced through the ranks to become a detective sergeant, after. Jenny was born, I had lost contact, 
but his phone number was ingrained in my memory after a few rings, his rough voice cracked across the line Marianne Wells, I'll be darned, though, too much time has passed, Sam, I apologize for the early call, but I'm really confused, furious, I told him all about what was going on with Derek and Clarissa as soon as possible, Sam snarled, those rat bastards locked up a kid in an attic, Marianne, just hold fast, my staff and I will be over as soon as we can, Sam. Showed there two hours later, pulling a paddy truck containing three young officers, as I was making Eliza some toast, he yelled, all right, you mutants, at the inexperienced police officers, child endangerment and wrongful detention are the obvious charges in this case, I desire all evidence to be bagged, marked, and lobbed, with their cameras flashing, the officers dispersed along the hallway towards the guest room, pale-faced. They returned with duffel bags brimming with evidence, including rusted chains, moldy food containers, and tattered clothes, Christ. Sam shook his head slowly and scratched his scratchy jaw, I told you, my voice sounded passionate and flat, now, can we nail those sadistic bastards with what these kids brought back, he gripped my shoulder firmly as he suggested, we can bury him under the prison, Sam, adamant about ensuring Eliza's safety insisted on escorting her to a child advocacy clinic for a thorough examination meanwhile his team meticulously sifted through the vast trove of evidence despite knowing the distress it would cause facing the graphic photos and medical reports was deemed a necessary ordeal to pursue justice after a quick wardrobe change from a bathrobe to more formal attire i embarked on my next task locating a fierce litigation attorney scanning through a dated rolodex i stumbled upon the name meline scofield with a brusque voice meline answered the call presenting my case detailing derek and clarissa's despicable actions i was met with a significant pause on the other end, 30 minutes later, I found myself seated in my corner office, resembling more of an upscale boxing gym than a workspace, amidst legal briefs and exercise equipment, Meline, a stern-faced brunette in a crimson pantsuit, regarded me impassively as I laid out the extensive list of offenses once more, after meticulously reiterating the staged home takeover, financial manipulation, and escalating cruelty towards Eliza, culminating in her imprisonment, Meline's expression remained stoic, though a hint of anger flickered in her eyes, you've documented every detail down to the last stomach-churning photograph, I remarked grimly, we've got them cornered with multiple felony charges, a grim smile crept across Meline's face, then let's retaliate where it truly stings, she declared, destruction of a family and criminal conspiracy to commit fraud. We'll strip them of every last penny, that's speaking my language, Miss Scofield, I responded. Feeling a surge of determination, the house, the assets, everything, they'll all be signed back over into our names, Derek and Clarissa will have a family reunion behind bars, a feral grin mirrored across my face as Meline and I locked in our strategy, with our sights set on Derek and Clarissa, the impending reckoning loomed large, over the next few days, we meticulously pieced together our case. Organizing evidence logs and medical records with meticulous scrutiny we needed to secure everything. Tighter than Fort Knox, Sam managed to track down surveillance footage from neighboring houses, piecing together a grotesque pattern of neglect and psychological abuse, with solid evidence in hand, it was time to spring the trap, we need to catch those bastards red-handed, openly admitting their actions, Meline declared, her hands clasped firmly on the desk, a smoking gun to leave zero reasonable doubt, wearing a wire, I asked, feeling a rush of nerves, the thought of turning against my own son made it clear that family ties had long been severed, Meline's eyes bore into mine with steely resolve, do you want justice for Eliza or not, swallowing hard, I gave a determined nod, you're right, what do I need to do, two days later, Meline's private investigator arrived with a briefcase full of surveillance gear, micro cameras, concealable mics, the works, as he wired me up, Sam pulled me aside, his voice tinged with fatherly concern, are you sure you want to go through with this, Marianne, weave, Got enough to bury them already without taking this risk, it's not a risk I'm willing to overlook, Sam, I replied firmly, gripping his arm, those two remorseless sociopaths don't get to hide anymore, I want the world to see them for the soulless monsters they truly are, Sam held my gaze for a moment, then nodded slowly, just be careful out there, you hear, taking a deep breath. I made my way to the mansion while Meline and Sam kept an eye on things from a distance, just breathing that same air made. My skin crawl, I rang the bell, hands shaking, 
Clarissa responded, her sickly makeup already emblazoned with a scowl, teasingly, well, well, if it isn't Granny Clueless, she said, I struggled to maintain my neutral demeanor, adorable, we must speak, right now, her eyeballs rolled dramatically, all well, but go quickly, it's midday when I have a pedicure, bracing myself for what was to come, I followed Clarissa's slender figure through the gaudy marble foyer and into the living room Derek was reading. Stock reports with a nonchalant attitude while hunched over in a leather chair, he grinned and didn't even bother to look up, oh, look who it is, he said, come to beg for scraps, I shot back, crossing my arms and giving them both a disgusted look, don't flatter yourself, I said, I came to hear it straight from you two cretins, Clarissa pretended not to know, he specifically, how did you treat Eliza, I answered calmly. Remembering every unpleasant detail, Derek's eyes gleamed viciously as his head snapped up. Clarissa gave voice to a sharp laugh, you mean our daughter. Her tone was tinged with contempt, your meddlesome little brat is lucky we allowed her to live under our roof at all. I tightened my teeth and admonished, watch your mouth. Derek roared to his full, imposing height and slammed down his paperwork. He loomed over me, his hot, foul breath tickling my face as he hissed, or what about that useless sack of bones? I'll say whatever the hell I want, the moment we were forced to deal. With her, she was nothing more than a money pit, with hatred, Clarissa cried a disgusting burden on our resources and our lives, by keeping that sulky wretch out of sight and mind, we did the world a service, white hot rage shot through my veins as Derek's words sank and I struggled to maintain composure, determined to document every vile admission, despite the abuse and imprisonment, my voice carried forced casualness. A facade of tough love you deemed necessary, Clarissa, a depraved cackle. Escaped your lips as you affirmed your actions, maybe next time it'll be a pine box instead of an attic, you remarked callously, hinting at further punishment for perceived ingratitude, that was my breaking point, I tore off the hidden mic, hurling it at Dirk's smug face, you sick, twisted excuses for human beings, I roared, fists clenched, I've recorded every last word, prepare for the consequences. You despicable monsters, enjoy your 8 by 10 cells for the next 20 years while we reclaim what you stole, with Dirk and Clarissa's depraved admissions secured. The wheels of justice finally turned, but my quest for justice was far from over, they had shattered my family, tormented my innocent granddaughter, and pillaged my legacy, they needed to be publicly shamed and humiliated on a global scale, in this digital era, reputations could crumble with the click of a button, while Meline initiated legal proceedings, I made strategic phone calls, first on my list was Stella Rand, an old college friend and now a regional editor for a prominent online magazine. Despite our seemingly different fields of study, we shared a passion for exposing arrogance and injustice, Stella, it's Marianne Wells, I said grimly, remember the story we always dreamed of writing, the one that exposes entitled elites, I recounted the detailed evidence of Dirk and Clarissa's abuse and fraud, providing transcripts and documentation, Stella's stunned silence was followed by determination, this will be the biggest bombshell expose I've ever run, she declared, high society monsters. Exposed as sadistic abusers, how's that for a headline, I felt a surge of vindictive satisfaction make them the most reviled scum society has ever seen, I replied, oh, don't worry, Stella assured me grimly, we'll ensure they get what they deserve, the next step in my plan was like a supernova, I reached out to my local news affiliate, enlisting a young, ambitious reporter to stake out Dirk and Clarissa's home day and night. Within 48 hours, everything was set for a dramatic reveal, first, Stella's. Explosive online exposed shook the internet, detailing every heartless act with chilling precision, the inclusion of police body cam footage capturing Eliza's harrowing rescue sent shockwaves through society, crashing websites and overwhelming servers, as the news spread like wildfire, the local media descended on the mansion in a frenzy, capturing every moment as police officers emerged carrying box after box of incriminating evidence sitting on the sofa, I watched the coverage with grim. Satisfaction, gripping Eliza's hand tightly, the news ticker scrolled below, broadcasting the downfall of the multi-millionaire couple, Derek, wild-eyed and enraged, was paraded past a barrage of photographers, while Clarissa, once glamorous, now shielded her face from the invasive questions of reporters, their fall from grace was swift and merciless, igniting a primal sense of delight within me, these arrogant, sadistic thieves had been brought down harder than Al Capone himself, it was the 
ultimate prize in my meticulously crafted revenge scheme, but it was only the beginning. After a lifetime of feeling powerless, the universe had handed me a weapon of mass destruction, and I had no intention of stopping until Derek and Clarissa's very existence was erased. Eliza's hollow gaze as she watched the screen filled me with resolve. Is this what you really want, Grandma, for them to suffer like they made me suffer? She asked, my gaze shifted from her haunted expression to the monsters on. The screen, consumed by righteous fury, it's exactly what I want, I replied coldly, they'll have the rest of their waking lives to contemplate the consequences of their actions, if I have any say, it'll be from behind cold, unforgiving bars, as the camera zoomed in on Derek's contorted face, a small, cruel smile tugged at my lips, this was just the beginning of the end, with Derek and Clarissa's global disgrace achieved. It was time to step into the judicial arena and secure a total uncompromising victory over those depraved vultures flanked by Sam and a group of officers, I marched through the courthouse doors, ready for battle, Meline stood waiting in the crowded lobby, her eyes blazing behind her trademark crimson glasses, are you ready to send those sadistic slugs straight to hell, she asked, her voice steely with determination, and I knew, without a doubt, that we were, she murmured something beneath her breath, and I nodded gloomily, they won't know what hit them, the gallery was crammed to the gills with an enraged audience and a media circus, overnight, this had become the decade's biggest legal blockbuster, as we walked in, the plaintiff's pleas for justice could be heard, lock the child abusers beneath the police station, turn the chair over to them, they're not worthy of life, Derek and Clarissa were taken in amid a thunderous chorus of condemnation, looking pale and dehumanized, a far cry from the pompous tyrants who had ruled over Eliza's life, Derek's. Deep set, utterly hateful eyes found me as soon as I sat down, I maintained a steady glance while my lips curled into a smug smile, let the fireworks begin, in the following days, a poisonous cloud of evidence began to descend, strangling everyone in its path, vibrant images of the crime site, terrifying audio recordings of Derek and Clarissa's horrifying confessions. But the most powerful testimony came directly from the source, as Eliza took the stand, the quiet courtroom was struck with her. Sharp remarks, she added in a little, tremulous voice, they told me no one was coming for me, that grandma had stopped loving me and I deserved to be punished, she faded away, melting into quiet sobs that went straight to the heart of me, despite all the anger that burned within me, I would always be haunted by the pain this poor youngster was going through, following the emotional assault. Meline took the lead in a heated debate that ended with a critique of Dirk and Clarissa as soulless vipers who had been corrupted by wealth and power, these reprehensible excuses for human beings perpetrated unspeakable atrocities upon a defenseless little girl, perverting even the most sacred family bonds in service of their own sick greed and depravity, her venomous remarks sent the audience into a frenzy, they belong in an underground cavern where the idea of sunshine itself is a myth passed down through the ages, however, cages will have to do for the time being, with a furious wrath, Derek leapt from his seat and struggled against the bailiff's bonds you dried out, old bat, you will be banished from society and sent to the ninth circle, Clarissa broke down into gulping sobs as the judge angrily gaveled for an order, his asthmatic voice addressed the jury when the chaos had settled down, members of the jury. I don't think I've ever witnessed such a complete abandonment of human decency and dignity as the actions of these individuals, he trembled visibly, in my whole career serving the public, I have never encountered a more striking example of the depths of generational trauma and exploitation, I'm not sure what would qualify as serious criminal responsibility under numerous statutes if the substantial evidence presented to you today does not, he gazed with pure disgust at the shattered shells of Dirk and Clarissa in this heinous case, I beg you to give what can only be the morally just decision, the world is waiting for your verdict, the jury broke up quickly, their decision was inevitable by this point, catching my comrade's eye, I gave a subtle nod, within the hour, victory was assured, cheers erupted from the gallery as the jurors returned and the historic verdict was pronounced, the vindictive culprits were destined for a lengthy incarceration, glancing at Derek and Clarissa, I saw identical expressions of shock on their faces as they were escorted away by their supporters, I mouthed a taunting message to them, the game was over, after a mere three hours of Deliberation, the jury returned, as the foreman rose to deliver the verdict, a tense silence enveloped the courtroom, Derek and Clarissa sat rigid, their faces etched with dread, guilty, the foreman declared, punctuating the air with finality, cheers erupted from the gallery, 
drowning out the stale atmosphere, Clarissa doubled over in sobs while Derek remained stoic, his eyes hollow, the foreman continued, undeterred, announcing guilt on all charges willful financial exploitation of a minor. Criminal contempt, child endangerment, and unlawful imprisonment. Electricity crackled through the chamber, cameras flashed incessantly, capturing the infamous criminals absorbing the monumental impact of their fate, order, order in this court, the judge's commanding voice sliced through the chaos like a whip, as the tumult gradually subsided, he addressed the defendants, Derek Philip Monroe and Clarissa Louise Monroe, this court has few options remaining in how to justly proceed from here, he began, his ancient eyes piercing the miserable souls before him knew. Two remorseless parasites perpetrated not only fraudulent theft and horrific abuse but also attempted to extinguish an innocent child's life, breath by breath, for the sake of meaningless material gain and societal status, he continued, condemning their actions as soulless and calculated evil, leaving Clarissa trembling and Derek staring vacantly. Derek was the target of his icy stare as he went through the long list of felony convictions that the jury had returned today, I hereby sentence you. Mr. Monroe to 35 years imprisonment with no possibility of parole until you have served a minimum of 28, Derek's jaw dropped open, but he kept quiet, the judge went on to denounce him as a heartless, hollow butcher who should be grateful to ever experience freedom once more, for your central role in these utterly monstrous crimes, I sentence you, Miss Monroe, to 40 years in a federal penitentiary with no possibility of parole for a minimum of 32 years, the judge declared, turning to face the Shaking Clarissa with a cry fit only a monster could utter, Clarissa fell to the ground sobbing uncontrollably, leaving her cheeks marred by mascara, as her friends flocked to drag her away, Derek just hung his head in resignation while steel bracelets were put around his wrists as for restitution, every asset, piece of property, security, and even your names now belong to the state, to be reassigned to your victims. The elderly judge added, frowning at the filthy couple by this decree, all of your unfair advantages are taken away from you, and all that's left are the rags on your rotten bones, Eliza, behind me, softly sobbed with relief, squeezing her hand, I extended my arm back, justice, however small and imperfect, has been served this day, I said quietly, Derek gave me one more fierce glance as the bailiffs yanked the defeated prisoners to their feet for the arduous march to permanent detention as they passed, I kept his raging gaze fixed on me and curled my lips into a triumphant, Smirk, I muttered, bye-bye, sunny boy, with disgusting dread, don't drop the soap, for one brief instant, his face, an empty husk, twisted into an expression of helpless, untamed fury, every bit of resentment and revenge that had been simmering inside of me finally blinked out as Derek and Clarissa vanished through the clanging jailhouse gates, sucked up forever into the court's twisted abyss, knowing that Eliza was safe and that the cancerous rot had been removed effectively crushed the families toxic cycle, I mustered the courage, somehow, to press forward into the light, the dreary prison gates clanged shut behind Derek and Clarissa with a resounding, permanent finality, it felt like a suffocating sandbag lifted from my shoulders, decades of baggage and torment dissipated in that moment, standing in the harsh courthouse lights, blinking against the unforgiving glare, reporters jostled for position, thrusting microphones and cameras into my face, Mrs. Wells, how do you feel now that? Justice has been served, is there any sentence harsh enough for these monsters, are you pleased with the extent of their financial penalties, question after piercing question lanced the heavy air, but in that moment, I felt oddly serene, empty yet centered, instead of attempting to shout over the raucous media scrum, I simply raised a quieting hand, they gradually settled, falling into an expectant hush, my friends, I began in a soft yet unwavering tone, I'm not going to mince words here, my son, and his spouse committed atrocities that can never be undone, scars that may never fully heal, I paused, glancing down at the slender fingers entwined with my own, Eliza's drawn features conveyed a kaleidoscope of emotions, sorrow, anger, hope, relief, so much for one young soul to process what they perpetrated upon my beloved granddaughter transcends the bounds of human morality, it was an abomination against everything a family represents, clearing my throat, I continued, I turned to face, Eliza directly, and together, we persevered, with the full power of love, truth, and justice on our side, we reclaimed what was so wrongly ripped away, Eliza managed a tremulous smile, wisdom far beyond her years burning in her youthful gaze, so, no, 
This punishment will never be enough to undo the damage done, I declared, but it is a start, a foundation from which we can finally begin to rebuild. I tightened my grip on her delicate hand, projecting every iota of firmness and unconditional love I could muster Eliza's path will be immensely difficult, the cruelty she endured may haunt her forever, but I vowed to be her sovereign shield, her protector, and nurturer every step of the excruciating way forward, a profound hush enveloped the throng, and cameras flashed like silent lightning from the sidelines, we have our family home back, I said, swallowing hard against a fresh lump in my throat, our legacy, our very identities, have been wrested from the greedy, bloodless clutches of evil. Incarnate, that miracle alone is enough to show the universe still harbors justice and mercy, even in its darkest abysses, Eliza squeezed my hand urgently, and when I met her gaze, she was beaming, not the plastered saccharine smile of her youth, but an expression of emboldened, defiant joy, and in time, we would find solace and redemption together, I went on, matching her radiance with great effort and an unquenchable desire to rise above, we will heal, I declared, we will claw our way back into the light, we will make our family whole again, the instant hung there, a weak but powerful lighthouse against a lifetime of hopelessness and oppression, I had been a brittle, miserable relic for far too long, trembling in the dark as my autonomy and self-worth were gradually taken from me, but not any longer, Eliza exuded strength in tangible waves that fueled an unwavering confidence in me, we would no longer be prisoners to our pain and suffering, our ties would become more and more, Brilliantly resilient, penetrating with each step forward, I felt freedom that I had not felt like I had in a long time as I rested my hand on her slender shoulder, they tried to break us, I said flatly, but by the universe's grace, we bent rather than broke, it's now our moment to rise like a phoenix and claim our rightful glory once again, the audience exploded into thundering ovation as cameras flashed in a dazzling frenzy, Eliza put her face in my chest and started crying, a long overdue. Catharsis, I put my arms around her and held her close, feeling more like a freed spirit relishing in the prospect of hope reborn than a conqueror hoisting a frayed victory banner, the trial had concluded, and we had received our punishments, it was just a matter of taking one fearless step at a time and navigating the long, uncertain road toward true healing, above is today's story, if you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up, see you next time.